بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam As you know for the past a number of weeks we've been talking about some of our greatest blessings and trying to find ways to better appreciate them in our regular daily lives. We've talked about the blessings of faith and guidance, the blessing of our ability to get to know Allah. We've talked about the blessing of peace and security, the blessings of community in the masjid. We talked about the blessings of health, wealth, and free time. And today, I would like to talk about one of our great blessings, which is life itself. And we're reminded of this blessing today with the passing of one of our very own. This past Sunday, as many of you may know, our sister in faith, Shazia Hasib, passed away at what we would consider a rather young age, leaving behind her son of 10 years, 11 years old. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about human life in the Qur'an, the reality of human life. He says, Azza wa Jal, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صُلَالَةٍ مِّنْ طِينَ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَّكِينَ And surely we created man from an extract of clay, and then we placed him as a drop in a firm lodging. ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُّطْفَةَ عَلَقَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُضْوَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُضْوَةَ عِظَامًا فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِظَامَ لَحْمًا ثُمَّ أَنْشَأْنَاهُ خَلْقًا آخَرْ فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ After that he says, then we made that drop into a clinging clot, and we made that clot into a lump of flesh, and we made from the lump bones, and we covered the bones with flesh. Then we develop them into another creation altogether. So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. You can find this in Surah Al-Mu'minun, verses 12, 13, and 14. As a result of this process, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing the process of how the child develops in the womb of the mother, we are overwhelmed with happiness and joy at the beginning of new life. We celebrate the birth of our babies, our boys, and our girls, and in gratitude, we then slaughter a lamb or a goat. We feed our families in the community as a sign of thanks. Family and friends, we get together. We extend gifts and congratulations to the new parents and to the families. We say, Barakallahu laka fil mahubi laka wa shakarta al wahab wa balagha ashudda wa ruzikta birra. May Allah bless you with His gift to you. The birth of a child is a gift to the parents, regardless of the age. We often think of that child as just a baby. But the child grows into an adult and remains, hopefully, a gift for their parents. They could become a greater gift to their parents after the passing of those parents by praying for them, offering righteous deeds and acts on their behalf. And so we congratulate parents for this gift. We say, may he give you thanks and may the child reach old age and may you be granted the child's righteousness. And the parents, of course, they respond in kind. They say, Barakallahu laka wa barakalalik wa jazakallahu khayra wa razaqakallahu mithlahu wa ajzala thawabak. May Allah bless you and shower his blessing upon you and may he reward you with and bestow upon you something similar and reward you abundantly. And in this exchange of prayers, it's often said that our hearts are filled with hope and happiness. When we offer these prayers to one another, we remind each other of the hope in our faith, the hope in our Lord, Azawajal, the creator of all, and it brings happiness in our lives. And with this new life and all its blessings, it only gets to live for what seems like moments. Our lives, when we look at the grand scheme of things, they are just moments and they pass. 
in the blink of an eye. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ لَمَيِّتُونَ Reminding us rather starkly of the realities of life, he says that indeed after that you are to die. Just as you were born, you are to pass away. And then, of course, our hearts are filled with sadness and sorrow. We come together to bid farewell to loved ones and the loved ones of our friends. We say, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا أَخَذَ وَأَعْطَى وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَهُ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى فَالْتَصْبِرْ وَالْتَحْتَسِبْ To Allah belongs everything. He gives and He takes. Everything has an appointed time. So be patient and expect your reward with Him. We say prayers and we offer condolences, especially to those most impacted by the loss of a loved one. Their parents, their children, their spouse, their siblings. أَعْظَمَ اللَّهُ أَجْرَكَ وَأَحْزَنَ عَزَكَ وَغَفَرَ لِمَيَّتِكَ We say, may Allah multiply your reward, make your bereavement easy and pardon your deceased. And then as a community, we typically pray over the deceased and fulfill their final burial rites. Those rites and rituals that we offer are there to help the transition from this world into the next. And that's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse. We're still in Surah Al-Mu'minun. He says, Then indeed on the day of resurrection you will be brought back. And we created above you seven layered heavens and never have we been of our creation unaware. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been aware of us before we were in the wombs of our mothers, after we were born, every step of the way. Our first step into life and our first step into the grave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been with us, aware of every single thing that we have done or not. Brothers and sisters, remembering death is powerful. It can, in fact, be medicinal if taken in regular doses. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us that medicine, even when we don't want it, particularly when it strikes at home. Like right now, when one of our own, in our own community, one of our own volunteers right here in the masjid passes away, we're forced to take that medicine. And if we take that medicine correctly, it can heal many of the diseases that we carry around in our hearts. It can relieve us from the burdens that we have to shoulder. And it can remind us of our greatest blessings. It can remind us of the blessing of life. The Prophet ﷺ would take every opportunity to remind his disciples of death. There was once a funeral possession, uh, p- procession that passed in front of the Prophet ﷺ. And he stood up immediately. And his companions, they told him that the one who was passing by was of another faith, that he was a Jewish person. The Prophet wasallam, he says, was it not a living being? To stand up at such a situation, by the way, you can find this in Sahih al-Bukhari in Muslim. Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani, he commented saying that when you stand up to the, due to the alarms of death, It's an act by which one glorifies the command of Allah and those responsible for carrying it out, meaning the angels. Brothers and sisters, when we remember death, we remember the grand scheme of things, this life and the next. We're forced to acknowledge our beginnings and our ultimate end, which is, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ So as for our sister, our dear sister, Shazia, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her and that he shower her with his mercy. We ask that he grant her strength and pardon her to be generous and to make her entrance into Jannah vast and wide. We ask that he purify her with water, snow and ice to cleanse her from her transgressions as white cloth is cleansed of stains. We ask that he grant her an abode better than her abode in this life and a family better than that which she had here. We ask that he take her into paradise and protect her from the punishment of the grave. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.
بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا في كما يحب ربنا ويرضى ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما brothers and sisters the question is in the face of death how is it that we can appreciate life how can we appreciate life when staring death in the face and the answer i would argue is to take advantage of life it's something that should not be squandered you find in musannif ibn abi shayba one of the collections of hadith was reported that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he said ightanim khamsan qabla khams this is a hadith that i mentioned to you last week take advantage of five things before five things and in this particular narration the first thing he says is hayataka qabla mawtik to take advantage of your life before your death. That's right. Take advantage of this life. That leads me to the next question. How does a believer take advantage of their life before their death? Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran wa abtaghi fi ma ataka Allah ad-dar al-akhira wa la tansa nasibaka min ad-dunya wa ahsin kama ahsana Allah ilayka. Divine instructions given in Surah Al-Qasas, verse number 77. Allah says, but seek through that which Allah has given you, the home of the hereafter. And yet do not forget your share of this world and do good <clears throat> as Allah has done to you. Ahsin, be benevolent as Allah has been benevolent to you. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is essentially instructing us to seek the hereafter to secure our place in Jannah with what he has blessed us with in this world while utilizing what we need to live a dignified life now. And that is done by being grateful for his blessings and employing the bulk of them for the purposes of righteousness. We utilize what we have to live a dignified life in this world, but we invest the bulk of what we've been given into our hereafter. And if you can do this, you will find that Allah wants good for you. You will find that Allah wants good for you and will secure your employment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's collected in Al Musnad, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, Either arad Allah bi abdin khayran, isti'amala. That if Allah wants good for his servant, <coughs> he will employ them. So you would imagine, qalu wa kayfa yasta'milu, as the companions they said, and how does Allah employ a person? He says, yuwafiquhu li amalin salihin qabla mawtihi. He says he grants them success in righteous deeds before their death, so that they could take advantage of their life to secure their place in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them success and righteous deeds before they pass away. So brothers and sisters, to take advantage of your life before your death, to truly appreciate the blessing of this life, you must dedicate yourself to virtue and honor. You must live a life filled with works of righteousness. That's the only provision that you can take with you into the next life. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, يَتْبَعُنْ مَيِّتَ ثَلَاثٌ there will be three things that will follow after the deceased. Ahluhu wa maluhu wa amalu. Fa yarju ithnani wa yabqa wahidun yarju ahluhu wa maluhu wa yabqa amalu. He said, those three, three things being their family, their wealth, and their deeds. Two of them will go back. They will stay. And one of them will remain. It's like they're following them into the funeral procession. These things will follow them along their way to their grave. Their families will follow for prayer, their wealth, which is probably transporting them on the way, and their actions. Two of them will remain behind in this life, their family and their wealth, while one will remain with them in the grave into the hereafter, and that is their deeds. Make the most of your life now before it's too late, my dear brothers and sisters. Fill your time with righteousness. 
Make your prayers. Make up for the prayers that you may have missed. Pay your zakat. Give charity. Fast. Remember Allah. Recite the Quran. Raise your hands in dua. Seek knowledge of your religion. Serve your family. Love your children and honor your parents. Support your community. Help those in need. Care for the orphan and impoverished. Relieve the burdens of others. Care for those who cannot care for themselves. Remove harm from the roadways. Clear a path so that others may succeed. Support the callers of faith. Release people from their debts. Pardon those who have wronged you. Give of yourself now while you still have the opportunity and the time and the resources so that one day you will be supported by divine resources of Allah. Brothers and sisters, don't waste your life. Don't squander a single moment with corruption and sin. Life is far too precious to waste on things like anxiety and stress, worry, fear, sadness, and anger. It's far too precious to waste on things like malice and hatred, on your ego, on envy, on pride and conceit. It's far too short to be wasting it on backbiting, gossiping, lying, cheating, and oppressing others. These things do nothing but lead to corruption and degradation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to conclude that verse in Surah Al-Qasas, He says, وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And desire not corruption in the land. For indeed, Allah does not like those who seek corruption. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to faith, that He bless us with a good life now and in the hereafter. We ask that He employ us for righteousness and not abandon us to ourselves. Without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are nothing. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon wa akhiru da'wana na alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqimis salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.